Are you ready, guys? Off you go. Right, well, this is our pitch. It's on our um, short film called Reoccurrence. Yeah. Right, so it's based on sort of dreams and nightmares. Um, it's a story that creates a feeling sort of day over and relates to obviously the nightmare sort of side. Um, yeah, and both of us have had sort of like the same experiences. It's like this is so it's more sort of relatable, hence why we've come up with the story. Um, as, yeah, as an effect we're trying to um, betray in this film, which is everyone who experiences deja vu kind of gets the feeling of like a disorientating feeling mm -hmm. and um, we just wanted to try and create that visually and through sound. Okay. So the log line for our short film is a recurring symbol from a dream follows a character as he decides whether it's more meaning than just coincidence. Um, so the characters that are in our short film First and main character is Charlie. Um, he suffers from PTSD. When he was younger, his dad abused him, and this has led to a teenage life where he's very stressed, suffers from anxiety. Um, he doesn't socialize with others, struggles with just social interaction in general, and um, this means that he doesn't have any friends, and he kind of just relies on himself. Um, the second character, um, is his brother, Ryan. Um, Ryan is very confident and quite cocky and as a child, when Charlie was being abused, was either out with friends or wasn't paying attention. He had no idea that Charlie was being abused in his life. Mm -hmm. And this means that Ryan just believes that Charlie is quite a strange child and socially awkward rather than having an actual serious mental problem. So it sort of starts off as uh, we meet Charlie, obviously the younger brother, off to being woken up by Ryan in the morning. So that's sort of like when he's got up, uh, got up, he's gone to work, you know, or if he's gone to like go out with his mates, he's woken up. Obviously the younger brother's telling him he's going out. Um, so yeah, it sort of starts off and Charlie gets sort of this initial nightmare where he can hear a sound being played over and over again. And at first he chooses to ignore it. Because when he speaks to his old brother, he just says, yeah, you're just hearing things, just ignore it. And obviously, over the next coming nights, it's all built up, and eventually he's had a, a final moment. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Charlie on um, just one night has this nightmare, and it means he starts to hear stuff in the nightmare. Um, but as the nightmare develops, he feels like something's going to happen to him, but he's woken up before that ever happens on the first night. Um, then he carries on his day, just as he normally would, um, and starts to hear the sound a bit more um, from his nightmare and thinks it's just coincidence, there's no problems with it. But he's a bit anxious, but doesn't really pay attention. Comes to the um, second night he goes to sleep, he, um, has the exact same nightmare, and this time this, the nightmare develops even more. So he sees a dark figure in the nightmare, but again, is woken up by his brother, but in a different situation. Usually, I think the second night be woken up by music in his brother's room. Um, that day, he then experiences more coincidences, but starts to feel like there's more meaning behind it than just he's hearing the sound, and. Um, over the next couple of days, he has the nightmare. Uh, well, by the third night, he has the nightmare and experiences the whole thing. Realizes that he dies by the end of the nightmare. He's been he's been killed by this dark figure, and he, because of his um, stress and anxiety, um, he feels that something will happen to him and tries to explain it to his brother, but because his brother doesn't care much for him and believes that he's just a strange child. He ignores it, tells him that no one really cares for you, so no one's out to get you. Um, but this leads to Charlie feeling just more and more anxious, and he just wants to get to the end of why he's hearing the sound in both his nightmare and in real life. Um, 
um, it gets to the point where he is just he stays off of college to kind of um, feel safe in his own house. This means that he's just chilling around, and as he's going to um, make his lunch, he pulls out a knife from the knife stand, and he hears the exact same sound that he's been hearing all around, and it's the slashing of a knife. Um, this literally is what he's been hearing, and it, he realizes in that moment that like, it could be the knife that's coming for him, and that he could die because of it. Um, he is shocked, and in that moment drops a knife, and trying to find a solution to everything, he thinks back and sees a photo in the kitchen of a place he went with his family when he was a child, um, which is very local to him. He then rushes off to this area to try and get away a second like field, and in that moment of silence, he believes that he's safe and alone, and then hears for a final time the slashing of the knife, and um, as he turns around to face what he believes is his nightmare, um, he is killed. But the audience will not see the dark figure, or what we believe is the dark figure. We want to try and make it as enigmatic as possible and try and bring a lot, a, a lot of mystery along with it. Yeah, so the, sort of the audience can question it, sort of come up with the right sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, we just want to create as many kind of, we won't say exactly loopholes, just a lot of um, cliffhangers and mystery. Yeah, a lot of mysteries too. And this could create many different endings and people can interpret it in their own way. We feel that this is quite a um, new thing that a lot of films have been doing, but it allows audiences to discuss things and what they believe okay. is going well with it and what happens in the end. Um, so yeah, we leave him at the end with a knife and facing his own nightmare. Um, Marketplace-wise, um, competitors that we found in films kind of hold a similar thing is Nightmare on Elm Street, seeing that people, teenagers mainly, in their dreams um, are fighting against or in contact with this kind of dark entity that tries to kill them. But in that film, like when they die, in their dream, they die in real life. Mm. We kind of change that by making it so that he sees what happens in his death in the dream and then believes it will happen in real life. It doesn't happen right. coincidentally. And then um, we feel that we're also different to that film and films similar to it because um, it's all focused mainly in the dream world. Whilst we found that we are showing visions from the dream world, but it's based mainly in real life and real life events that are happening. Um, a unique selling point. Um, feel that our film aims mainly towards our target audience, which is 13 to 20, just teenagers mainly, mm -hmm. and young adults. Um, because it doesn't just talk about um, nightmares, it discusses a lot of social problems with teenagers. One being um, depression, anxiety, sorry, anxiety, and just um, alienation that a lot of teenagers suffer because they can't or find friends or struggle to socialise with other people. Um, we also talk about childhood PTSD, which is something that isn't usually discussed about. Um, we find that it's usually found in war films, mm. and it doesn't. Those sort of like areas obviously make it relatable to our target audience. So sort of like the college sort of age, roughly. And um, yeah, also the uh, target audience sort of like age range is the same as our characters. So it makes it like further relatable. And yeah, we feel like we can sort of like symbolise this through different like effects, creating tension and suspense. Yeah, and because we've got only two characters um, shown throughout the film and one of them being away for most of it. The main character is, um, well we want to show the main character's feelings and worries through visual effects mm. and sound, because then there's not going to be that much dialogue because he's by himself, he won't yeah. be talking much. So we're going to try and find a way to draw in the audience through visuals and different techniques to 
to create a tense and relatable feeling. Okay. Any questions? Um. In terms of deja vu, mm -hmm. how are you going to be in getting that across based on your technical roles that you're taking on? Okay, so cinematography wise, um, we feel that we could use a lot of first person views or um, tilted angle shots because it creates a tense and kind of worried feeling. Um, and a lot of um, uh, freehand recording because okay. um, it creates that kind of relatable feeling like as if you, someone's watching someone or you're from the view of a person. Mm. Yeah, that's the sort of editor role. It would probably be so like flashbacks back to like when it's happened previously and by doing this you try flashbacks or using like Sort of blurred effects to avoid you be sort of like like special effects to sort of create like a creamy sort of feel to the okay to the flashback. Cool. Thank you very much.